Binance and their CEO CZ have been sued by the CFTC. This is a monumental deal. The lawsuit is huge with staggering proportions, not just for Binance themselves, but for their entire ecosystem. My friends, this is a big one. We can't overspeak this one enough. We're going to dive in in this video about the lawsuit, what's happening, but also why we're seeing a continued trend for crypto shills influencers, scumbags, scammers, and so much more. We are seeing the beginnings of an end of a nasty era. I might even say a dark era of crypto. I, for one, am really excited to see this happen. This is good for all of us, but it's going to come with some pain and turmoil. We're going to dive into what's happening in the Binance lawsuit and what it means for you and me and the entire crypto world. Don't go anywhere. All of this and so much more coming right up. <laughs> All right, friends, Wes Spencer back with you again. We're going to dive into what's happening. I'm just going to share my screen out here and we just we're going to go right into this. I'm using Coindesk because the summary is really solid and there's good commentary around it that I'm going to peel out for you. But I want you to know you can go and pull up the entire court doc should you wish to do so, although I don't think any of you naturally would unless you happen to be a lawyer or a pretend lawsuit junkie. OK, so let's go into this Binance CEO CZ sued by CFTC. Look at these words, willful evasion. That's a big deal. These words, willful evasion, that really means from the CFTC's side of the house, this is not just an accidental thing. It's not a, oh, we, we need to have a lawsuit to correct a couple things that we have a disagreement on. Willful evasion, that's a big deal. There's a lot that's impending here that we're going to cover. So uh, let's talk about this. CFTC alleged Binance offered unregistered crypto derivatives products and directed U.S. customers to evade compliance controls through the use of VPNs. Is that true? Is that not? Well, according to the CT CFTC, it is true. They claim to even have evidence that show that being the case. Now, keep in mind, at this point, this is just a lawsuit, right? So there's no indictment. The CFTC, I, I, they're not, there's, there's no, they're not partnering with a regulatory body that has the ability to, um, you know, pr prosecute. None of that is happening. Don't, don't take this out of context. But there are some really big looming things inside of this. So CFTC, the Commodities Future Trading Commission, basically, there's two groups in the U.S. that have really been heavily concerned with regulating and getting their grips in crypto. It's CFTC and it's the SEC, at least in the regulatory side around finance. Now, there are, of course, other regulating bodies as well that care about all this from the fraud side of the house. We're going to throw that out for this video. So they're suing Binance and CZ uh, yesterday on allegations that the company knowingly offered crypto derivatives products against the U.S. federal law. Now, one of the issues with this that I want to be really clear with is this right here is there's the, the the feds have never really done a great job ex, ex, really explaining where crypto lies. Is it a security? Is it a commodity? You might be watching this video and you're not a financial person. You're like, Wes, I hear everyone else use those words. I don't know what it means either. Don't worry about it. For the purpose of this video, it doesn't matter. What you should know is the, the, the regulators themselves have done a really bad job of explaining and really clarifying what crypto is and what it isn't. And even the different, we can't even just say crypto. There's so many different kinds of crypto technology that exists out there, whether it's tokens, whether it's technology, it's layer ones, layers, there's so much to all of it. But really, they've done a really bad job with that. And so until they give a lot of clarity, these things are going to happen. So the lawsuit itself, let's dive into this a little bit uh, as well. It's filed in Illinois, uh, probably Chicago, I would guess. And it uh, is going after, it's, it's alleging that Binance operated derivatives trading operation in the U.S. offering trades for cryptocurrencies for Bitcoin, ETH, Litecoin, Tether, and Binance. So they're not necessarily saying that each of these, like they did something illegal, but they're, they're saying that referring to these as commodities. Now, here's the big challenge. Someone put out a tweet on this recently, and I thought it was a great point, is, okay, which is it? The CFTC says a lot of those cryptos are commodities. The SEC challenges that they're not commodities, that they're actually securities. Well, which is it? Can we get some clarity here so we can understand? Because how can any of this be solved until we at least have regulatory clarity from our examiners, from our regulators? 
Right now, that doesn't exist. And when the CFTC and the SEC can't agree on this, how are we supposed to make any progress here at all? I'm not saying that this lawsuit this this is going to get mired into like that argument. But look, when the feds themselves don't agree, we have major problems and just understanding is this the chicken or is this the egg, right? The suit also alleges that under Zhao's leadership, and this is probably a bigger deal, directed its employees to spoof their locations through VPNs and not just employees, but even, you know, as far as their own clients to be able to say, hey, if you're in the US, you can potentially skimp over all this stuff. And so the, this really goes in depth into all of this. It, it talks about it, but the, one of the things they showed is the immediate release of this article. Look what happened to Binance Coin's price. It absolutely tanked, went down 5% over the day. And as I think you would expect that it would. Now in a press release, CFTC counsel Gretchen Lowe called their actions willful evasion of US law. That's how I intro the video. They're basically saying, look, we have internal chats and emails from inside employees that prove that this was willful evasion. That it's not just them saying, oh, look, you know, come on, that's a little strong. We've always had good programs to like really, you know, follow U.S. regulations, which side note, as we said, don't really even have a lot of existence and clarity. But they're saying, no, they willfully, intentfully went beyond and tried to evade that law. So we're going to find out in the lawsuit is the data and evidence that they have. Is this actual real? Does it hold water? Is it admissible in court? We're going to have to find out. Binance has instructed U.S. customers to evade such controls by using VPNs to conceal their location. You can find tweets all over where people are showing examples of all of this, of this actually happening according to the evidence that's been submitted in the screenshots. I can't verify them, so I can't speak to them. But if they are true, that's definitely a big issue. So this article is really going in depth into why, you know, how big of a problem this is. Uh, Binance spokesperson says the company's made significant investments over the past years to ensure that we do not have U.S. users active on our platform. Now, I can speak to that personally and say that actually is true as of now. When I logged into, Bi I have a, a Binance account from way back in like 2017 or 18, something like that. And when I log into it now, not Binance U.S., just Binance, it doesn't let me log in. It sees that I'm coming from the U.S. Now, I did try that over VPN and I was able to log in. The problem that you're going to get into is all the KYC, the know your customer checks. And so we'll kind of have to see where this whole thing falls out. But it was true in the early days. I was able to log in and I had, I had no problems being the U.S., no KYC at all. In I went. It was very simple. I remember those days. Now, they've since clamped down on that and it's much more difficult, but you can still get in and bypass, as you see here, if you have VPN to, to get in. It's just going to be, I'm not sure that it, you can actually do much if you're logging in from a VPN from, let's say, Switzerland, something like that, um, if you can't get past the KYC checks. So that's going to be the challenge. So we're going to skip by all this. And then here's the internal chat. So one of the other things the Coindesk article pulls out is some of the data from the lawsuit alleging a lot of what happened internally so, so that they can say, I mean, look at this right here. So this is Lim, their chief compliance officer. On the surface, again, I can't confirm that this quote is real. So let me just say that. This is all alleged from the CFTC. On the surface, we cannot be seen to have U.S. users, but in reality, we should get them through other creative means. If that's true, if that statement was made, that is pretty damning. That is pretty much a death knell, at least for the message that CFT or that, that Binance is trying to promote of like, you know, hey, we're not, none of this is really true. We've always cared about regulations and never wanted them in. If that's the case, um, it's really hard to argue that position for sure. So going on, you can read the rest of this. There's, uh, you know, a lot more of the comments that they peel out through this from internal conversations that I'm not going to just, I'm not going to belabor you with everyone. You can go read this on your own. So this brings up again, as I mentioned before, tokens as commodities. And, you know, for its part, the SEC has made it clear that most tokens are actually securities. Chair Gensler, Gensler often says that every crypto token apart from Bitcoin seems to fit the definition. CFTC officials have often suggested that Bitcoin and Ether are likely commodities, but they're additionally maintaining that Litecoin and stable coins are as well. So this goes back to what I mentioned. Which is which and what and where and why and how? We just haven't gotten there yet. It seems like maybe the consensus will be that all tokens are going to be determined to be securities. And then you're going to have the layer ones, especially the, the, the ones like, the, like Bitcoin and then stable coins be considered commodities. We're just going to have to see where all this falls out. We still don't have a 
absolute defined definition. And this lawsuit may indeed be one of the things that leans towards it. If you would like to see the rest of this article, it's right here, or the, the, the lawsuit, it's right here, you can get to it. But a couple other things I did want to jump into as well. One is what we see here from Binance. So first, right off the bat, you got to dive into the tenor and the tone of this response. It is absolutely, they're not taking the aggressive stance of like, we are being attacked and this is a conspiracy. We plan to fight. We plan to like, nope, nope, they're not doing any of that. They're taking the tact of what? Oh, we, we love regulators. We've worked with them cooperatively since the beginning. We really look forward to making sure that this is a conversation that allows us to continue to do it, right? That sort of thing. Like just, you'll see this in here. And by the way, I'm not hating. I'm not even saying that CZ's response is incorrect. It may turn out that this is a witch hunt from the CFTC. Who's to say? The lawsuit's going to turn over a lot more details and we'll find out the truth. I'm not taking sides here, but I am pointing out how they've reacted. Look at this. They filed an unexpected in disappointing civil complaint. And all those words are very calculated. It's unexpected. So we didn't know that this was coming. What? Were you kidding? Like that's, oh, and we're really sad about it because like that disappoints us and we're disappointed. Like we've, we, we haven't met expectations. You know, they're definitely taking the humble route and then civil complaint. They're letting us know this is right now. There's no indictments. There's no federal charges. There's no prosecution. It's just a civil complaint. So those words are very, very, comp uh, very intentfully spoken. Let me just say it that way. Despite our working cooperatively with the CFTC for over two years. And so they go through all of these things. They kind of talk about, you know, hey, look, our compliance, we've taken it seriously. We block not just by IP address. We have KYC. We do all, all these kinds of things. And honestly, he's right. They do have a lot of that stuff in place and they do a good job of it as all the other exchanges do as well. Cooperation and transparency with law enforcement. So all of the work they've done uh, around cybercrime of working with regulators and, and, and all of these kinds of things. If we've, we've handled 55,000 law enforcement requests, seized 125 plus million, et cetera, right? Regulations, we hold all the regulations we need. And then trading, this is where they kind of clarify everything. Hey, a lot of the stuff you're saying about us is not true. You know, we don't trade for profit. I didn't cover this in the video previously, but there was some of the allegations from the CFTC that they were manipulating the market and they were making money in margins, that sort of thing. And so um, th this is like, this is the statement you really want to read up. And he says, personally, I only have two accounts. I eat my own dog food. I store my, my own crypto there and I need to convert uh, my crypto from, from time to time. I'm not doing anything nefarious. There's a 90 day hold period on and on and on. So they kind of wrote this back and, and, and really kind of took the tact of, Hey, I, I'm not the bad guy you think I am, CFTC, and I'm really disappointed that all this happened. I'm really sad that this is the outcome here because I thought we were great friends, right? So what's going to happen out of this? Before I get to that, let me jump into this. One, There's so many good tweets that are out there from a lot of good folks, but I'm just going to dive in only to Adam Cochran. And the reason I'm going to dive into him is because he does a really good synopsis of the actual lawsuit itself. And this is helpful to us to understand kind of what's going on through all of this and what the outcomes might be. So I'm going to show this one to you. And again, this is just Adam's comments. You may feel free to disagree if you wish, but um, I'll, I'll link this in the video description so you can get back over to his set of tweets, his thread if you want to. But it's a 23 tweet thread. Uh, and he, he says striking a fatal blow to Binance because of what could happen with this. And he says he thinks they have a really strong chance here of superseding and top the Binance empire. Um, by the way, I guess I should show you a little bit more. Here is Adam Cochran's page, just in case you want to follow him, you know anything about him, um, that, that sort of thing. So there he is. And so I'm going to scroll down past some of this. And there's a lot of very interesting things that he pulls out of the lawsuit. But when we get down to about thread 10 or so, tweet 10 or so onto the threads, um, here we go. So on all counts, CFTC seeks to ban Binance's CZ and Lim, that's the CEO and COO, and all affiliates from engaging in conduct, conduct described in this case. So like no more crypto, basically, from trading or registered entities, holding any common interest, direct trading of digital assets. They're really trying to like blackball from all of 
the, the, the crypto and finance world. And by the way, CFTC can do that. They have the ability to do those things. Those are usually like injunctive orders. Accepting funds from anybody around digital assets, registering or exempting with CFTC, on and on. And then it gets back into here to disgorge or pay back in a fine the trading profits, revenues, salaries, commissions to make whole whoever was impacted. I wish <laughs> SBF from FTX could have that. I wish Alex from Celsius, bunch of scammers, wish they could get us back and make us whole. Um, we'll see what happens out of all that. Um, but I wish the same would be held to them. We'll see what happens. Pay civil penalties, stand, now here we go, stand jury trial on this matter. Again, let me be clear, no federal indictment at this point in time. And so he sums this up, Adam does. This means that Binance US would be dead forever. Mid-markets with the US UBO, gone from Binance, on and on and on. So they're done. They can't work in a regulated business anymore. They, they're, they're not operating in the US. And so this gets to the question that I just said I table towards the end. What happens in this world? Well, I think what happens is if Adam's scenarios, that if all of this goes in favor of CFTC, I think it does mean potentially a full shutdown of Binance in the U.S., which then makes it really difficult for them to operate anywhere else, given how integrated the U.S. financial system is into everything. This potentially spells doom not just for Binance, but all of the Binance tokens, and could certainly just continue to topple an already weakened crypto ecosystem. And that brings up the final question, the most important one, this right here. Is this bad for crypto? I think short term, sure. I think a lawsuit in which the CFTC wins out all in ends up in a really bad situation for crypto overall. A lot of other technologies and innovation will fall with Binance. They're the biggest exchange in the world. If they were to topple and be shut down, it doesn't come without pain and turmoil. But long term, I think it's really good. What are we seeing? And, and keep in mind, let me say, let me define what I mean when I say really good. I don't mean that I'm cheering Binance to fall. But what I do mean is because we don't have regulation and clarity from our regulators, because crypto has always been a wild west, if anything, this last market, what we've seen in this last market, this bear market, has really been a we reap what we sow. There have been so many charlatans. There have been so many scammers that have all come in. And what they've brought in is greed and a me first mentality. And they thought that they could survive. They thought that they could get things through. And in the end, they top their own house fell down and so many people came with it. And that's sad. Even yours truly have been directly impacted and have lost a lot of crypto by a lot of companies like Celsius, for many of you like BlockFi, like FTX, like Voyager, all these others that simply couldn't stand the test of time. And let's not even forget the influencers, the BitBoys of the world. All of these crypto, like I could just look at CoffeeZilla's amazing video series, looking at Andrew Tate and all these influencers that have come into the ecosystem and even A-list celebrities like Tom Brady and Matt Damon and all of these others that have shilled and promoted and pumped crypto. I'm hoping that these things, these are just more dominoes that are all going to spell the end of a nasty era of crypto. That's what I want to see. That's what we need. And we'll see if it happens. And one of the things that can happen with that is some clarity from the regulators. If you're an influencer, here's what you can and can't do legally. And if you get caught, you will be fined, potentially even indictments if it's like a large scale type of fraud or Ponzi scheme. I'd love to see more clarity come in. Because right now, anyone with a Twitter following of a few thousand can go just shill some complete scam coin. Anyone with Tom Brady's, not, not as if anyone could be like Tom Brady, but any A-list celebrity like Tom Brady can be wooed away to go cover some crypto of which they barely know anything about. But everyone says FBX is awesome, so go, you know, shill this. Again, this is all allegedly if these rumors and reports are true. Same with all of the crypto neckbeard influencers out there, like the BitBoys of the world, that we know from everything we can see publicly have been very involved in doing some pretty shady things. Now, they're fighting back and saying that it's all false, but there's now class action lawsuits against all of these people. And here's my deal. Even if these prove to be false and that people like BitBoy didn't do anything wrong, they certainly took a lot of people down with them. 
in the fall. And a lot of those people could have held up and stayed a lot stronger had that not happened. And really a lot of the influencers that made a lot of money on all of their shilling of crypto, what has that done for the market? Well, they're gonna survive it, but a lot of their followers will not. And that lack of empathy is really one of the things that I want to see to be a final nail in the coffin of all of the shadiness and darkness we have in the crypto space. So let me sum back up here. I'm not saying that Celsius did anything wrong. I'm not saying that these crypto influencers that I mentioned by name are necessarily doing anything wrong. We're gonna to have to find out the facts in the cases. But I will say this, I welcome the class actions. I welcome the lawsuits by CFTC because these things, I welcome the prosecution against FTX and others because these things will bring clarity and light and hopefully along with it, better understanding from our regulators on what should happen and what this world will look like. And until that happens, it's going to be a wild west and it's going to be pretty nasty. So I'm hoping that this will be toward the end of it. But I want to know from you, do you agree? Are these the signs, the final last times of the nasty dark ages of crypto and now we're going to enter into a better time? Or will it just get worse and just keep going downhill? Give me your thoughts below. Would love to know what you see, what you hear, and what you think. Thanks so much.